Houdini 20.5 is out and Karma has gotten a bunch of new updates, so I wanted to take a look at some of the new features that you might have missed. So as always, this project file will be available on Patreon. If you'd like to grab it, you can do so in there and take a look at a bunch of the new features. But let's go ahead and take a look at some of these new things. There are a bunch of updates to Karma, so I can't go over them all, but I'm gonna go over some of the other like smaller updates, I guess, the, the ones that maybe not everyone paid attention to, but are actually kind of important. So there have been a number of optimizations. I just want to start off by saying that. So Karma should run faster in 20.5. There's also been some updates to the physical sky, which I think are important. I'm also not going to take a look at that, but let's go ahead and look at some of these. So I'll start off with materials. Um, actually, there was a quick, quick surface material node that was added. So this allows you to just create materials super easily through this. You still have to use an assign material or like material linker in order to assign these, but you can just do everything on the surface level here, which I think is kind of nice. Um, but I think material library is still kind of the way to go. It doesn't give you, this doesn't give you as much control as like the material builders would. Um, there's no way to like dive inside these. You have to drop down like an edit material or something like that in order to get some added functionality. So let's go ahead and jump inside here and take a look at our shader ball network. So in here we have some updates to what is accepted by XPU. So we have a new material X ambient and occlusion node. I think this was available for CPU in the past, but it was not available in XPU. So you can use this in your scenes. It starts off with a max distance of infinite. If you check the docs, this actually is not limited. So if we drop this down to like 0.01 or something like that, you can see how that changes. I'm gonna go ahead and change our ramp here as well. Let's set this to just some drastically different colors just so we can see kind of what's going on here. So if I change this to something a little higher, like 0.1, you can see we start to get some of that ambient occlusion showing up. You go all the way up to one if you wanted to. That's uh, a little bit more than you'd probably want, but you can see kind of where this is going. So the higher you raise it, the further the spread of the ambient occlusion is going to, um, is gonna happen. Then we have some updates to this geometry property value, as well as the, you can see USD Prembar reader. Yeah, this node right here. They basically do the same thing. I don't recommend using this one. Uh, this is the way to go as far as Material X goes. So I just use this. So if I go ahead and wire this into our display color, you can see that it sets it to just white. And I have this set to read in our display color. So I've got a color set up on our actual shader ball and in, in SOPS it's called CD, but when you transfer over to, um, to USD, it's going to be changed to be display color. So if you don't know that, that's how that works. But the important thing here is that if this output does not match what you're wiring it into, and it's the same for the USD prim bar reader, and uh, should be some of the other nodes inside of Material X or Karma as well, or Material X, I guess. Uh, but they have to match. Otherwise, it's going to set that to the default value here. So if I change this back to zero, see that it's going to just show up as black. And I can change this over to a color. And you can see that it's actually going to read in our value here. And the reason why this is important is because if you are looking to transfer your materials to other applications, all this stuff has to align properly. So if you're if you got a color output, it needs to go into a color input. If it's a float output, it needs to go into a float input, or rather, a float input requires you know a float input. And the reason for that is, there the reason that I say that is, if you transfer over to other applications, they may not accept these transitions. Like Houdini made it very easy to, to work with Material X because it would accept these and it would automatically convert them over. Other applications don't necessarily do that and they'll throw errors and stuff. So I just recommend that making sure that your outputs match your inputs. Let's go ahead and jump out here and take a look at this ring. So this ring here, if you look down in our scene graph, is actually a curve. So in XPU now, you can use curves as geometry mesh lights, 
which is pretty cool. So if we take a look at our ring material here, all I've done is created a standard surface and added some emission to that with a color. And then we can come in here and we can just, you know, disable our dome light or actually that wasn't good. Let's set that to zero. And we have a, our ring light is, or our ring is showing up as a ring light here. So if I take a look at our rendered geometry settings, all I've done is selected that primitive. And then I've brought down to the light and said, treat this as a light source. And now that works inside of XPU, which is super nice because emission is super hard to render and super, super noisy. So this cleans up a lot, lot faster. So let's go ahead and set this back and then let's look at this Karma lens material. So I have a vignette that's actually already on this, this render here. If we look at our camera here, we can come over to this Karma tab and select this use lens shader. And then we can select this button and it's gonna create this Karma lens material and automatically apply that inside of this, this little box right here. And that allows us to quickly and easily um, make these lens materials and apply them to our camera, which I think is super, super nice. So if I set this back to zero, you see that that goes away and I can crank that back up and we get some nice vignetting around our image. So I, I think that this was a massive change that definitely needed to happen because before you had to create them kind of inside of your material builders and it was just kind of a pain to do. And I think confused more people than people actually knew how to, how to make them. So this is super nice to, to have just available to us on the LOP level. And you can just create them yourself using a Carmel lens material, just type that in and it pops up. I also want to take a look at these AOVs. So XPU has some new AOVs that it supports. There are what five here. So we have motion vectors and velocity, ambient occlusion, facing ratio, geometric facing ratio and some new normal stuff. So some new stuff to add to AOVs for your comp that we can also now do inside of COPS, which is pretty cool. And then the last thing that I wanna take a look at is our spheres here. So if we look at our spheres, they are actually points just being rendered as spheres. And that is not anything new, but we can render them as other objects as well now. And that's going to match up in XPU to CPU. So if you come to this rendering tab and come down to this geometry and shading, this right here is where it should show up. Now, I don't know if this was a design choice or if this was just an oversight and they are gonna come back and fix this, but we don't actually have any options to change what they're being rendered as inside of XPU. We have to come over here and switch to CPU. And then we have some extra options here. So we have this render points as, and we can render them as disks, or we can render them as oriented disks. Now, I think that it's kind of stupid to have to jump back to CPU in order to change that setting if you're using XPU. That's just kind of my opinion. Um, I, I think that they should add in an option here. And I don't think it's gonna be super difficult to do with what I played around with the parameter interface. You could probably do it yourself relatively easily. Uh, but I think that's something that they should have just done by default. Maybe they just forgot to, I'm not really sure. Uh, but I think that's definitely something that should be showing up here. They can have it match CPU, that's fine. But all they need to do is have the, you know, the setting, you know, control both of the CPU and the XPU, um, you know, parameters. So not really sure why they overlooked that, but we can change it in here or we can change it. Let's actually... Set this back to spheres, just so I can show you. We can change it with this render settings edit tab. So if we come to Karma default geometry settings, we can scroll down and render points as, and then we can do this disks. If we set this as the display flag or orient to disks, same thing. Or we can drop down a render settings node wire this in and scroll up, come to Karma, and then we have the same thing here as well. So that is kind of a quick overview of some of the stuff that has been introduced to Karma in 20.5 that's new that you might have overlooked. Uh, there's a lot, like I said, that has been added. So definitely look through the docs and look at all the new stuff because there's a ton of different things that have been added. Um, but I wanted to highlight a few that I thought were important. So 
Hopefully this has helped you out. Uh, I've got a bunch of other videos on my channel showcasing some of the new stuff in 20.5. So take a look at that if you're interested. But anyways, thank you guys for watching and have a good day.